Hi everybody and welcome to another Lightburn tutorial. Today we're going to look at layers within Lightburn, what they are, how to use them, how to configure them, and what they can do for you. So let's start out with a basic Lightburn project here. And I'm going to draw just a few shapes and import a couple of images onto the screen. And um, we'll kind of take a look at how to associate them to different layers, how to assign different cut values, um, setting things like output uh, and uh, just order layer priority and some of the basics. So let me pull in a couple of just images here. And we'll put that in the middle of a circle. Really don't have a plan for what I'm laying out here. I'm just kind of winging it. Bring in the light burn logo. And we're going to make this so that it looks I don't know, maybe like a plaque or something along those lines. Okay, take all this. Let's center it up. And we're going to put that in the middle of the screen. Okay, so um, what we're going to look at here, so everything I've imported, if you notice, I've got two images and two shapes. And if you look at my two shapes and you look in the cut info, um, the cuts toolbox over here, they're both showing as part of the same layer. Um, they both get the same speed and power and, and all the various settings. Both my images, same thing, showing as the exact same layer. So in order to use layers in Lightburn, it's actually very easy. You click on what you want and you basically pick a color from the layers color palette down here below and it will associate it with a new layer. So let's take uh, the circle. We're going to take the circle and we're going to change that to blue. And you'll see on the left or on the right over here I ended up with a new cut layer um, in blue and it took my circle and turned it blue. So that color is now associated with a new layer. So I now have a black cut layer and a blue cut layer. Um, and then let's take my images here and I'm going to take an image and I'm going to assign it to red. So now I've got a black cut, a black uh, image, a blue cut, and a red image. So now I have four unique layers out here. And let's actually go one step further and I'm going to say this is a plaque. So I'm going to create an outline around it. And I now have um, a representation on the screen of what my plaque is going to look like. So I'm going to take this outline here and um, give it another layer color and I'm actually going to set output to no. So what that does is it gives me the equivalent of a construction line or construction border that shows this is the extent of my uh, work, my work piece. Um, but I'm going to turn off the output. So when I turn off the output, it will not send those instructions to the laser. So it's here on the screen, it's assigned to a layer, but it's not going to be part of the end job. Um, but where that's useful is now I can um, set my origin, my job origin, and it will account for that outline of that plaque. But um, and I can use that for targeting and, and machine setup for my job, um, but then it won't output this. So um, it's it's pretty powerful to be able to throw that on the screen and use that for setup and, and positioning um, and be able to turn off that output. So let's take a look at now that we've got some layers. So we'll take a look at our first cut layer, and maybe I don't want my cuts to be cut image, cut image, because the laser or light burn will send order of operations based on what you see here. So C0, C01, C02, C03, it'll go right down the list. So in this case it would do a cut first and then an engrave and then a cut and then an engrave. Um, maybe I want to put my engraves first. So what I can actually do is click on my layer and lower my priority down. So zero is going to be the first and I'm going to move this into position one. And so now I've got image, image, cut, cut. So using my priority, I was able to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and place my layers in the order of operations that I want them to actually occur. So now I can take, and let's use my library here, and I want to 
maybe do a um, uh, dark engrave or deep engrave on there. Maybe I want to do a light engrave on here so I can assign those to the layers. And you can see now, so my speed's, my speed's cranked up, but my power, 85 on the deep, 40 on the... So I've got different speed and power settings for each of these images. Um, let's say this one I want to do a light trace. Uh, this one I want to do a deep trace. I'm just, I'm, I'm just throwing settings out there just so that you can see that using the different layers, everything associated with that layer will get that operation. So if I came in here and added a couple more circles, for example, now if I take those and assign them to the blue layer, they get associated with the blue layer and they will get the speed and power settings um, that I've got associated with that layer. So now as you get more complex drawings, um, sometimes the color coding can get pretty close if you're dealing with multiples of reds and oranges and stuff like that. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to distinguish what you've got on the screen. So there's a neat little feature that you can come to the layer and if you right click on it, it will actually flash and highlight what's on the screen and what's associated to that layer. So it's a it's a quick visual indicator um, as you get into more complex documents that you can see, okay, what really is on that layer? Okay, maybe I don't want that. Um, you know, and it just gives you a quick and easy way to identify what's on the screen. So now we've got a basic job laid out. Um, and as you saw, it was relatively simple. You select your you select your object, and you come down here to your layer palette, your color palette, you select your color, and select your settings. Now, so this job, let's say this job was finished. Um, everything about it's good, it's been burned, and I'm now on to a new job. So, new job, nah, we're not going to save anything. And I'm going to import something here. Let's import a different bug. Um, and if you notice that it maintained a memory. So blue, for example, was the last thing we used, or actually I think um, the last image we had was going to be a, was on red. Okay. And there's a 340. Um, there's a 350 there. So as you go through the layers, you'll see that the layers actually maintain a memory of what they were when they were last used between jobs. So that allows me to set up some, basically some known entities that I can come in and quickly on a job and I know I want this to be a trace, or I want this to be a scan, or I want this to be a cut, and I can just say, okay, well, I know that I've in the past used blue for a full cut, I've used red for a trace, I've used black for a, a scan, whatever, and I can quickly assign my layers, and it's going to automatically assign my, my speed and my power settings based on my preferences. So, again, just more power... Um, that Lightburn gives you when manipulating layers and working with layers. So we'll take that, just put a square around a circle, or a rectangle around it, whatever. Um, put that back to blue, and it puts it back to my 1250, just like I had in my other setting. I can put it back to black. Um, I would get my 1220, just like I had in my last setting. So you know, again, using layers is just a really powerful way for you to control multiple operations within the job, um, multiple styles of engraving or scanning, multiple styles of cutting. You can do traces and full cuts in the same job without having to break out and do different jobs um, like the stock controller boards make you do. So it's really um, just a really powerful tool, again. Um, so that's kind of using layers within Lightburn. And that's the manual, uh, the manual style of assigning layers. Now, if we look in the documentation, and I'm going to pull this over. So we look in the documentation, and as we uh, um, scroll down to the assigning layers automatically. So, and I don't have an example of this open, but if you're using Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or, or any number of other external graphics apps, and you create a job, and in that job... Um, you um, assign colors to your various items within uh, AI or within Inkscape, what will happen is when you bring those into Lightburn, 
Lightburn will automatically attempt to map your colors to a matching color from the palette. So if this color palette is a match to your AI palette, um, or you can match these colors in Inkscape, when you import your uh, SVG or your DXF, um, it will attempt to map those colors appropriately and automatically set up your job for you and your various layers. If it can't match the colors exactly, what it'll do is it'll jump to the next available color. So if you have color one in your in your um, in your AI file that doesn't match a color here, what it'll do is it'll take that color and it'll find the next available color in the color palette that has nothing assigned to it, and it will assign that color to that uh, to that palette um, and so on. So as you go through three, four, five colors, it'll actually assign to the first three, four, or five colors that are not assigned and don't if you don't have a match. If it does have a match, obviously it'll assign black to black, red to red, blue to blue, um, and, and work its way through. But if it doesn't match, it'll just go to the next unmatched color that's available in your palette and, and assign there. So, um, you know, if you use the same colors every time, um, you know, just make sure your layer orders are similar and it should uh, import pretty close to what you want. If not, again, you can just come into Lightburn, um, select your item, make the color change and assign it to the palette you want. So I think uh, that about covers it. You know, the uh, all this information is on the documentation site as of, uh, let's see, March 5th. Um, I put it up there this morning. So um, take a look over there, read through that. If you, as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments here or jump over to the Lightburn support, software support group on Facebook and, uh, we'll do our best to answer them for you. So again, uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this, uh, video if you want to see more.